Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It is Thursday night and we're going to create some art. It's going to be awesome. Um, it, I, as you can see, Larry, I, I saw that Larry's in the uh, chat. Uh, your picture is not done yet. I'm still working on it, so bear with me. I will get that out uh, to you probably next week. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I like how it's coming along. <laughs> I can never do this. Wait, wait, there we go. All right, there you go. There, there's your picture. <laughs> um, so a couple of people already in the chat. We got, okay, Larry, we got Bill Gorman. Um, so uh, what are we working on tonight? We are working on a doggo picture. And uh, I want to kind of try to keep this one loose and uh, kind of like in the style of some of my charcoal pictures. Um, I know I said in the description that I'm going to use charcoal, but I think I'm going to use a combination of charcoal and pastel just to kind of work this dog out it's gonna be like a little jack russell terrier i think it's gonna be kind of cute so um hopefully uh you guys are into that and if you're not maybe you can just watch and listen in anyway that'd be kind of cool um a couple of uh announcements so i do have my um my whiskey bottles done i don't know if you guys want to see those or if you want to wait until i get some photos taken um i'm, I'm just going to show them to you so let me uh let me switch to this full view so uh these are the coffee painting uh, whiskey bottles that I've been working on. Uh, so this is the owl one. Um, what's kind of cool is they are all sealed up and I can kind of touch them without worrying about messing them up. Uh, this is the owl that we worked on last week, I believe. And then on the back side, you've got like the little miniature owl. And then this label, they wouldn't let me cover that up. That needed to stay intact. Uh, the rest of it is kind of like this paper mache kind of like um, I, I had to kind of use the watercolor paper and then kind of seal it in with some other kind of like paper kind of mache type stuff. So anyway, I made basically a, like a little whiskey bottle cozy for it. So that's the uh, that's the owl one. And then, you know, for those of you guys who are interested, who aren't seeing this in real time, you can check it out later. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll post pictures up and stuff. Um, but this is the deer one. I think that one turned out really well. Like if I was going to buy one of these, it'd be tough to uh, pick between the owl and the uh, deer. This one looks really, really cool. Um, again, I am so amazed that the small um, coffee art that I did matches the original very large coffee art. So I'm pretty impressed with that. I got a little... Got a little deer on the back here and stuff. Got the little signature copy ring. So, and then again, you know, like a little, almost like a stucco kind of cozy going on there. It's paper mache, but, um, you know, it kind of re reminds me of stucco. It, it reminds me of the, um, the moonshine bottles, you know, like the stoneware moonshine bottles that kind of have the, uh, the clay bottom and, and everything. But anyway, this is all sealed up really good. Um, you know, I can, I can touch it. I'm not worried about messing it up. It's basically waterproof. Um, so anyway, those are done. Uh, I think I'll probably drop those off to them maybe tomorrow or early next week and, and see how it goes. Hey, kids in the room. Cool. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to start in on my picture. Feel free to hang out with me and chat. Um, like I said, I, I, I know it said in the description that I'm going to use charcoal, but I, I think I'm going to use a little bit of like brown pastel as well. Cause this is, this guy's like a little, you know, like a little terrier dog. And I think it'd be kind of cute to like have some brown highlights on them and stuff like that. Oh, thanks, Mama Q. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Oh, you like the owl the most? Cool. Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of tough for me. I don't. I really don't know which one I like better. They they both turned out so much better than I thought they were going to be. Uh, I have found so you know like part of the show is uh, talking about what works and what doesn't work. So I'm not going to hide my mistakes and stuff. Um, I have found that. I enjoy the painting side of it more than the craft side of it. So what I mean by that is I really enjoy painting the pictures, but I didn't enjoy affixing them to the bottle so much. Like to me, that was kind of like a crafty type thing that I did not enjoy so much. Um, it's okay. It turned out well, but like if I, if I had to do another one, I would probably still do it, but uh, I wouldn't, and I would have thought ahead and maybe like thought, well, Maybe, maybe I'll go about it, fixing them to the bottle in a different way and stuff. I, I didn't really enjoy that part of it, but I think it turned out pretty good. So I'm glad that you guys like them as well. Cool. Yeah, I'm glad you guys like them. Neat. Um, yeah, so I'll probably drop those off tomorrow. Um, I don't know how many other ones I've already been turned in. I know that like when I drop them off, I'm going to be eavesdropping just to see what other people have done. So I think that'll be... Uh, That'd be kind of fun. Like, if I can take a picture, I probably will, just to cheat. But all of these things will end up online eventually. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm using this, like, this brown pastel on brown paper. 
um, to kind of like work out where these, obviously this would be like a floppy ear. You got little eyes here. I want to keep this like really loose and expressive, like I said in the description, but we'll see how it goes. This is just kind of figuring out where everything is, kind of blocking things in, things like that. There would be kind of an eye over here. So how's everybody's Wednesday? I'm sorry, Thursday. <laughs> yeah, so how's everybody Thursday going? Lost track of time there. I don't want to be losing days. I want to be gaining days. I'm a, I'm a little bit behind on some of my projects. And uh, I just want to get them out the door. I've got some projects that I, I have in mind that I'm super excited about. But they kind of take a backseat to, um, you know, like actual stuff that people pay me for and everything. Um, so not, not even just art projects, but like just projects in general, you know, work related stuff. So, but, you know, I'm hoping to get to them because I'm kind of passionate about them. I'm super excited about getting them done. Some of them are kind of top secret. Can't talk about them on, uh, on the uh, channel. But other, you know, other ones are like art related and stuff. So like, um, I can talk about those for sure. Yeah, just kind of keeping this loose, kind of sketching it a little bit of a dog. Um, I, I'm going to switch to black, I think. Let's see. I think the nose would be kind of right around here, maybe. Maybe a little bit lower. Get a little triangle there for so that I know where things are. This one kind of comes up a little bit. But yeah, among the art projects and stuff like that, I, I just want to get more of those um those coffee paintings done. I really I've got a raccoon in mind that I really want to work. Uh oh uh, yeah, Mama Q. Um so again, the the bidding does not benefit me. It, uh I like the money goes to a charity, so it doesn't go to me. But I will put more information up about that. The online auction will be um, April 11th. So if you want to support a charity, in fact, there was some talk about uh, people pulling money together, maybe uh, purchasing a bottle uh, just for fun. I'll, I'll kind of work all that out and let you guys know what's uh, going on with that uh, the closer we get to it. But again, it's not until next month. It's not until after the eclipse. So we've got a little bit of time. Oh, uh, thanks, Larry. Yeah, so the um, there are ones from last year posted online. I can share that link if you guys want. Um, you know, some of them are pretty cool. Uh, a lot of them are painted. Um, kind of in hindsight, I, I, I kind of wish I went with traditional paint instead of my coffee paintings. But everybody seems to like my coffee paintings, so I thought, like, well, I'll try to make it work. But most of the um, the issue, like, the only issues with this entire project was trying to get that paper adhered to the bottle in a way that made sense. I think I did a good job of that, but again, it, it was the the challenge. The challenge wasn't even doing the painting. It was it was more of um, the extra craft part of it, which I don't know. I'm just not just not into arts and crafts. I guess. Let's see, can I figure out where the eye? I think the edge of the eye. So you see what I'm doing. So I'm kind of like going off of this nose here kind of reaching across and even though I kind of marked off a little bit of an eye up here I think that I think I need to move that eye over a little bit get it closer to this ear yeah so just little little reworkings of proportions and so on Yeah, so the coffee thing, I, I think it's unique. You know, I uh, one of the cool things about coffee is, like, I, I'm guaranteed to be the only one doing it, right? So, like, there are people who paint coffee, but, you know, it's just not, it, it's still kind of unusual. It's not like a lot of people do it. So, if I enter into, like, some sort of, I, I wouldn't call this a competition, but to me it's a competition. I, I want to do just as well as the uh, other more professional artists. Um, so... You know, when I enter a competition, I want to kind of stand out a little bit. So one of the ways to do that is to do something that nobody else is doing. And in this case, absolutely nobody would have thought to do coffee. So I lucked out there. That's why I was thinking, like, if I ever end up doing, like, an art show or something like that, if I if I just stuck with my coffee paintings, I would probably be the only person at an art show doing coffee paintings, which is kind of cool. And then, you know, I, I think I mentioned what my gimmick would be. I would just serve coffee at my booth 
for free. I would give away free coffee and that would like get people into my booth, you know, a little poor spin trick for uh, drumming up business. <laughs> uh, don't accidentally bump my dad's. Yeah, <laughs> like it's definitely a competition between me and my dad. Um, I keep forgetting to show pictures of his. I, I showed you what one of his past bottles was, but I haven't shown you like what he actually submitted. I think they ended up looking pretty cool, but I, I don't have one of them on me, so I can't show you. I'll, I'll take pictures of all of these things and put them up eventually. Like, I feel like I should have done that already with with um, these bottles, but they just got finished up. In fact, I was debating whether or not to take them down there tomorrow or wait until Monday just because, like, I, it, it's got, uh, like, Mod Podge. It's, it's really good quality Mod Podge, too. Like, it's dishwasher safe. Um, I don't know if anybody's going to be wet in these bottles, so I was super concerned about that. So I got the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. But um, to be fully waterproof, it needs to sit for, like, or cure for, like, 30 days. So that's not going to happen, obviously. But I think that I think for the most part, it has set up enough to where it, like it's no longer tacky or anything like that. That's the problem with these crafty type things. Like I don't, I don't really know. Like somebody who deals with arts and crafts would know these things better than I do. I just know how to draw or paint or or something like that. And I'm not even particularly perfect at that. When it comes to like sticking paper on glass and stuff. I, I just kind of like look tutorials up on the internet and try my best. <laughs> so that's all I did here. So again, like I, it doesn't matter if this dog looks perfect. I'm, I'm going for a very like loose um, picture. So to me, like this eye may be a little bit too large, but I'm not worried about it. I'm mostly worried about getting getting everything in and just making it look cool, you know. I've, I've definitely started enjoying doing a certain type of charcoal picture lately. Like, in the past, I um, I tried to create more realistic charcoal, charcoal pictures, and I don't, I don't know if I like them as much as I like this kind of, like, expressive stuff I've been doing. Like, with that, ele uh, that elephant and the, um, the dragon that I, I did... When was that? Last weekend? Or last week, maybe? Uh, I really enjoyed doing those. So I'm, I'm trying to, like, branch out and see what, like... You know, it's like with the coffee paintings. I, I did one. I really liked it. And then I started thinking, like, well, what other animals can I do? Let me give those a shot. So it's the same thing with this style of charcoal. Um, it's all about experimenting. So I did one charcoal picture of the elephant that looked really cool. I did the dragon. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool, too. People like that one. Like, a lot of people just like dragons in general. So, like, here's a tip. If you guys are looking for something to draw and you, and you hope that people will tune in and just check it out, draw a dragon. Because people love dragons, you know. Dragons are really popular in media anyway, so for some reason people search for it. Um, uh, I think that there was a trailer out recently for um, uh, House of Dragons, which is the, uh, the Game of Thrones spinoff. And... Uh, so that, that's been in like search terms in the past week and it kind of like got my dragon picture a few more views than maybe I normally get. And I think it's related to that. But anyway, um, yeah, draw dragons. People love dragons. Anyway, my point is um, whenever I pick up a new style or something, I try to I try it out in different with different things just to see what all it works with. So this is like me drawing charcoal dogs just to see does this kind of loose style work with that? Does it, is it still a loose style or am I doing something different? Um, I feel like I am doing a little bit different, but I still feel like it's in the same spirit. Anyway, that's what I'm up to. <laughs> Whenever I'm doing like a dog. <laughs> what? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I do like the uh, coffee pictures. It, they've cons they're probably the only thing that I've done that consistently, they always look this similar. So, like, there's, like, a signature style there, which I like. I think that's really cool. Because that's one of the things that you definitely want to develop as an artist. Um, and it's something I, I've struggled with over the last year, is uh, developing kind of, like, a signature style. Like, all my pictures look somewhat different from each other. 
depending on what medium it is, maybe they look similar, but they often look like really different from each other. So what's cool about the copy stuff is again, you know, it surprised me that I was able to create on the miniature bottle label, basically the exact same picture I already had in like a larger format. To me, that's awesome because that means that, that, that means I'm being consistent about it and that's good for growth, I think. But yeah, just trucking along with the art stuff. Uh, I think this weekend I'm not going to be able to do a lot with art. Unfortunately, I've got work I've got to do this weekend to catch up on things. I was still I'm still wanting to go see um, uh, Dune Part Two in theaters. Um, my nephew who lives up in Cincinnati was in town the other day. We were at a bar just hanging out and stuff. And I remember like, that's where I saw the first Dune, like over at his house. And we were talking about it and stuff like that. And it really surprises me. I haven't gotten to go see it yet because it's been out for like a week or two and it's done very, very well. I'm surprised I haven't gotten to see it, but you know, that's, that's the way it goes. Sometimes, sometimes life just gets in the way. It's really tough to stay focused when uh, the weather has been really nice lately. Um, yeah, I, I was sick for like St. Patrick's Day, so I, I missed that. And I'm trying to like catch up from that as well. I wanted to go and to like the parade and all of that jazz and it, it just didn't work out. But, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you get sick. Little guy. He's so cute. He he still looks a little bit rough, but bear with him. He'll he'll come together, I'm sure. The thing with this uh dry medium is like I like to just throw it down, get some uh get some structure going and then kind of smooth it out and kind of go from there. I think that this side of the nose is going to be a little bit darker. Around. Yeah, it's a it's a Jack Russell. Um, well, I think it's a Jack Russell. There was a, like another version of a, a Russell Terrier. I want to say it began with the P, a Parsons Terrier. And um, to me, they look exactly like a Jack Russell. I think this one is a Pars Parsons Parsons Taylor uh, Terrier. Um, but to me, it looks basically like a Jack Russell. So I'm not really sure what the difference is. I know that some Jack Russells are kind of like short hair. Maybe that's the difference. I don't know. Like, get kind of a mouth going here. He's got he's got a mustache. I haven't I haven't done the white bits yet, but he's got like a little white mustache going. Pencil, and then you know, again, just super sketching. Sketchy. I don't, it's not sketchy as in like, you know, sus, sus or something like that. It's sketchy as in actually sketchy. But I, I want to keep it loose. I want to keep it super sketchy. And just kind of keep working at it until something forms on the page that I'm happy with. But anyway, how you guys been? Nice no, kids, <laughs> it's kids, Jack, but nice kids, Jill. I like it. Hopefully, your guys' this week has gone well. Um, definitely by Thursday, you know how your week's going. Like I always say, on Tuesday, there's still some hope. Uh, you're in the thick of it now. You are over hump day, which is awesome. Basically, tomorrow's your Friday, so you can, like, you know. Sit back and chill, enjoy yourself, but you are in the thick of it now. So you got, you got some white on his face here. This bit kind of comes down. Yeah. Some little fuzzy stuff going here. He's got this like little white stripe here. Again, 
basically a Jack Russell, but I'm not sure if um, this is technically a Jack Russell or not. All right, so I'm going to, um, I, I think that's good enough to where I know where things are. Now I can kind of develop from there. Oh, somebody had asked me earlier if I could do like landscapes and stuff. I do want to do landscapes um, and I want to do landscapes and pastel. I just, I, I need to get another set of pastel uh, that has different colors in it. The color, except for the pencils, I've got really good pencils. Um, the stick pastels I've got are pretty limited and I just haven't gotten around to like buying a new set of those. I'll probably do that soon. Um, and then, then I'll definitely do some landscapes. I guess I could paint some landscapes. I've done that in the past. I, I painted like a little Creek, um, nearby like last summer or sometime. I'll probably do more of that kind of stuff, but you know, there are other people who can paint way better in watercolor than me. <laughs> so I kind of want to try the whole pastel thing once again, because like not as many people do it. I like to do things that not as many people do. See, bring that down. So you see what I'm doing there. So like I knew that this uh, collar needs to kind of uh, end at that uh, that earlobe there. So that's what I was doing. I was kind of measuring that. Oh, and by the way, when people talk about like um, loose style, they they basically mean like kind of left up to the imagination a little bit. So like, you know, you get some sketchy lines in here and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be fully rendered. The idea is like, just quickly capture something like, we're at 30 minutes now and I have basically caught the essence of this dog. Now I could, could have even done this a little bit faster if I was more, you know, sure of myself, which I am not, <laughs> I'm not a confident artist yet. But, um, yeah, I could probably ca capture this dog a lot faster. So, but anyway, the point is that, like, within 30 minutes, you've got the essence of the dog. And then from here, you can decide how much you want to render it further. So I do want to render it further. Um, so I'm going to get this little smudge stick and start blending some of this stuff out. And, um, again, still keeping it loose. You don't want to over overwork uh, these things. But in terms of like getting, you know, all your values and shadows and highlights and stuff correct, that's what's most important to me. You know, it doesn't matter to me if I get every single piece of fur or any of that stuff. Um, I just want to make sure I get all of the, um, all the stuff that kind of makes a realistic dog in here. There you go. Uh, JRT and Parsons look the uh, same, but Parsons are a little taller. Okay, all right, that makes sense. Um, that's like, um, oh, what was the uh, thing that looked similar that I did recently? I mean, they looked exactly alike, but one was like a lot taller. Seems like one of those type of situations. Anyway, um, yeah, I do think this is a Parsons. Um, short or wire hair, just like that. Oh, okay, yeah. Which one was, you guys remember Benji? Like the old dog Benji and stuff. Like, um, um, he would Benji. Benji was basically a uh, a Hollywood dog star, like during the eighties, I think, and started with like Chevy Chase. At least, oh, like in at least one movie. What was that? It's something about Chevy Chase died or something. Came back as a dog. <laughs> like, anyway, I do basically like what kind of dog is Benji? That's what I'm wondering. Benji was the best dog. We had a dog that looked like Benji when I was growing up. I miss that dog. That dog was like my best friend growing up. Um, every every man has like a handful of dogs throughout their life, but I remember every single one of mine. Every single dog I've ever had. Ranger, I think, was the first dog I had. I don't remember what kind of dogs they were. This one was like a big fluffy dog, probably like a kind of like a Siberian Husky, but it was all like white. I don't know what kind of dog that is. That was Ranger. And then I think my second dog was Chrissy, which was the Benji lookalike. Benji starred on Petticoat Junction. Hmm. Hey, Lorraine, how's it going? Just doing a loose puppy dog. 
This one's got like a lot of shadow around his eye. He's a rock star. He wears eyeliner. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. He's got like these dark um, spots around his eye. There's the shadows or whatever. Go ahead and render that. And then there's some white in this eye that I will put in separately. Yeah, this is looking cool. So, often when drawing with charcoal, you know, and some people do like an entire picture with like a blending stump, but I find the blending stump to be just as useful as a pencil. You know, it's basically you're drawing the, um, the soft areas. And then, you know, it is a cool technique to go off and draw you know, all the soft areas and come back with, um, you know, your regular pencil and stuff and kind of like add some detail after the fact. So that is a cool technique, I think. Now, of course, you, you run the risk of over uh, blending, which I've seen some people do. Usually, um, usually newer artists who aren't sure of themselves and stuff, they do a lot of blending and stuff and, and it, it doesn't look realistic. Like that's one of, so there's a couple of things that I think that every new artist goes through in terms of like mistakes they make, like we all do it. And um, that's definitely one of them, like over blending, making things like super smooth, which is not natural. You know, the, the whole idea behind one of these like loose expressive type things is you kind of want it to feel like it's still like you want to expose that it's a drawing you know you don't want to hide that it's a drawing that's part of it anyway benji was a mixed terrier thank you yeah the only difference between my dog and benji was uh benji i think had like the dark tips on the ears uh my dog did not but otherwise, she looked just like Benji. She was an adorable dog. She lasted a long time, too, now that I think of it. Because, like, I remember... I think my parents had, had her when they moved out to the country. And... I don't know. This doesn't mean anything to you guys. I'm just going down memory trail. Like, I think we had that dog for at least 20 years. That might be a little bit longer, but that's what my my faulty memory th uh, thinks. All right. Got a pretty nice ear here, I think. And then, like, if you overdo it, like, this is probably a little bit too soft, right? It's about push and pull. So this is too soft. So I want to kind of come back in and add some of that definition that I ended up removing. Like, you still want tufts of fur and so on. So I feel like a lot of these drawings I've been doing in this style look more sketched. But that's okay. Like, to me, that's kind of cool. I mean, I like it. And you know what they say about art. As long as the artist likes it, it doesn't matter, right? That's not true. It's all about the viewer. Lorraine had a Benji lookalike once as well. That's cool. Yeah. I just love Benji. Benji was in the best movies, too. I'm trying to remember all of them, but the one that really stands out in my head is um just because i really like chevy uh, chevy chase as well is uh he chevy chase died and he had to solve his own murder um but in order to do so the only body he could come back in was a dog and then <laughs> he had like a handler i don't think it was god i think it was like an angel or something like that and uh, whenever that person was around, he could turn back into Chevy Chase or like the human form or something. But otherwise, he had to be a dog, and he had to run around and solve his own murder. Yeah, it, it was it was a good movie. I it's something like I don't know, like I can't remember the name of it. It was probably something dumb. It was the eighties. 
It was probably, it, I haven't seen that movie in forever. It was probably a dumb movie. But some of those movies hold up, like um, Chevy Chase movies like um, Fletch, Fletch and Fletch Lives. Those are classics. I can go back and watch those anytime. I really like uh, Fletch movies. I think Chevy Chase ended up going nuts at some point. <laughs> but back in the day, he was a great actor. He was so funny. I think he ended up um, getting kicked off of that community show because he was like, not getting along with the director and uh, other actors and stuff so on so i think i think maybe he's gotten a little a little bit of a um old man syndrome in recent years you know where you're just mad at everything but back in the day he was funny as hell jeffy chase is your cousin okay all right well everything bad i'm saying about him uh bill don't don't go telling him all right, so I like that. Um, so just to show you the contrast, so the, this side is more rendered, this side is not, and you can kind of see the difference. And this is why I love charcoal. So I can get some little highlight furs in here as well. But this is why I love now, in this case, I, I'm doing some a little bit different than what I usually do. I'm using that third color. I'm using that brown, but I, I think it works for this this guy because he is like a brown um, doggo, or it like has bits of brown. And I wanted to, I, I didn't want those to be black, basically. I wanted to add a little bit of color. It's not a lot of color, as you can see, this is very subdued, but. Anyway, just wanted to just get those pieces in there. All right, so now I can work on this other side. I always work on the right side first, which is dumb because I'm like right-handed. So now I have to reach over the finished part to get to the other part. Oh, well, that's how it goes. Oh, Heavenly Dog. Oh, thank you, Lorraine. I appreciate that. I love that movie. I've seen that movie so many times growing up. I don't know why. Oh, Heavenly Dog. That's what it was. It was in the same vein as, uh, what was that movie with uh, War Warren Buffett? I think that's his name, where he died and had to come back to do something, unfinished business. It's usually like somebody dies and then they have to come back to solve their own murder, something like that. I felt like there was a couple of movies like that back in the 80s. It was like, it was like a trope or something. But they were generally pretty good. I remember, I remember them being pretty good. Chevy Chase was just funny. Basically, like anything Chevy Chase did back in the day, uh, from Saturday Night Live to, um, you know, Caddyshack, um, Fletch, definitely. I, I felt like he didn't get as much um, love as maybe like Bill Murray and some of the other people who came up during that time, which is a shame because he, he was hilarious. Like, he was even funny in that one... Uh, uh, I forget the name of the guy who's singing. The, the um, he's in that one music video with that one guy. <laughs> the, the, I want to say art something. I don't know. You older folks might remember. It was a little bit before my time. I uh, I had too much darkness here. I need to get like a little highlight going. There you go. Get some fur going up here. And again, loose style means you just kind of like make some marks and just wherever they end up going is where they end up going. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I haven't been paying attention to, to uh, what you were talking about, Tyler. Uh, ignore me. Sometimes I uh, I miss what's going on in chat. Hope, hopefully you're... Your mental health is doing well, that you're doing well. Seems like you're you're upset over like sports. You you definitely shouldn't be upset over sports. You you definitely shouldn't make your your um your mental health dependent upon the outcome of a sporting game, you know. Like I, I did I did my March Madness bracket, but it's just for fun, you know. I 
I don't expect anything to come of it, but you know, I, I, I do some of these things just to participate. You shouldn't do it because like you're concerned about it. Like you really have no control over who wins and like these things people think they do. And that's how like, you know, that's how like sports books make money because people think they have some sort of idea how these things are going to turn out, but you never know, you know, accidents happen. People drop a ball, thing like that. Well, this one's like basketball. People just miss hoops. Even the professionals do it. You definitely can't like pin your your mental well being on a sport game. You just have to be above all that. Oh, the vacations movie. Thank you, Lorraine. Yeah, man, we're on like a Chevy Chase. Uh, uh, retrospective tonight, but that's cool. I love Chevy Chase. Uh, yeah, the vacation movies, those are the best. Um, oh, uh, Spies Like Us. That was good, too, back in the day. Um, you know, maybe he didn't do so hot in life uh, or in his career as some of the other ones, just because, you know, he kind of had, he kind of had like a, a type of, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say he was typecast, but he kind of like basically played the same character every time. And Bill Murray did to to an extent as well, but at least later in life, Bill Murray showed that he had some range and he could do other things. Um and even even some of his characters, like there's a big difference between Bill Murray and Stripe and Bill Murray and Groundhog Day. You know, like there's at least a little bit of a difference. But with Chevy Chase it's almost always the same character. Hey, Hater, how's it going, man? Oh, I forgot to say hi to Trusted Living as well. Hey, hey, Trusted. Welcome back to the uh, show. It's been a while. So we're just drawing a puppy tonight for those of you guys who just popped in. Um, trying try some of my looser sketching techniques on, a, um, on different characters, I guess. So in this case, I wanted to see, eh, can I do like a fuzzy dog? in this style. And I, I think it's turning out okay. Pretty happy with this so far. I think it looks good after, you know, like I blend things out. Before I blend things out, it looks pretty rough. I think this nose needs to come out a little bit more. I think, yeah. All right, let me get, first off, let me get some whites in these eyes so that they pop. I hate when people say pop, you know, like, I really want that to pop. I, oh, I hate that so much. And then I say it. <laughs> I hate when other people say it and then I say it. It's just uh, kind of cliche and overused. That's why I don't like it. Yeah, those look nice. Just pop. <laughs> Get some white going over here. Um, again, the, these um, these pastel pencils are really great for getting some of this fur in. Now, again, I'm still keeping it pretty loose, you know. It's not like I'm drawing each individual fur. I'm just kind of scribbling here, which is cool. Um, for a dog like this, I think this is totally, totally fine because this dog is meant to look a little shaggy, you know, he's not one of those short haired ones. He's, he's one of those longer haired ones. And, um, you know, they get a little shaggy. He might need a haircut. So for those of you who um, have ever messed with um, pastels before, you hear that scraping on the page. I love that. Now, it's not for everybody. Um, there are some people, and I've talked about this before, who straight up reject using um, pastel or charcoal because they can't stand the feel of it. You know, they can't stand the, um, the sandiness of it or the texture of it or whatever it is. You know, different people, different different things. Um, 
for me, I love all that stuff. I love that scraping noise. Like to some other people, it might sound like it's scraping on a chalkboard or something. I, I respect that. But to me, I love it. I love that sound. To me, it's like that ASMR stuff people talk about. But to each their own, you know, like if, if it ain't, if it ain't for you, I'm not going to judge much. <laughs> I like to say, I like to add that whenever I say, I won't judge much. That just means I'm not going to tell you that I'm judging you, but secretly I'm judging you. <laughs> secretly, I'm, I'm forming private opinions about your particular weirdness. I'm joking, of course. I don't. I don't care if you like that type of stuff. All right, so this should be more fuzzy. I'm coming up this way. Again, I'm just kind of like scribbling, but I think this is this is good. You know, there are people who just do sketches. You know, like um, they don't render it. They keep it very very loose um and that that's totally appropriate especially for a dog like this it has like a lot of um less features going on so i'm i'm like over blending this because i do want it to be kind of shadowed so i want it to mix with that uh charcoal underneath and kind of form a gray instead so i want that to be gray instead of white i want this to be white so i won't i I'm, I'm very careful over here not to like blend it too much but over here i do want it to kind of like blend in and get dirty and be gray so that i can show different areas of his face because like you know he's got the fluffy bit and then he's got the under bit. The under bit's not going to be as uh, light. So, I don't know. I don't like that, but I'll, uh, I'll work with that bit. I think it's looking pretty cool. You had a homeless cat named Benji. She's orange and black and white. That's cool. Um, homeless cats. They're a little bit different. You know, like you, you need to be careful around homeless cats because like homeless cats are basically feral and feral animals will rip you up. And they often carry like diseases and things like that. I, I still think, you know, obviously they still have a right to live and you should treat them nice and all that stuff and take care of them as you can. Like if you can put food out for them or whatever. I don't, I don't know what the, um, the idea is that you're supposed to do with feral cats, but just recognize that feral cats are not something that you can just like bring home and put a litter box out and then now it's domesticated. Um, they've gone, they've gone basically like. Yeah, they're just they're no longer domesticated is 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 kind of what I'm trying to get at very badly. <laughs> like when you call a uh, a shelter and report like that you found a cat, um they're going to ask you like questions to, to figure out whether or not it's a feral cat and if it's a feral cat, they don't want nothing to do with it. If it's somebody's cat and it just got out or something like that, Definitely need to find a way to get that cat back to its owner. But I, I don't know what the answer is for feral cats. Like, maybe somebody who uh, works with shelters, maybe one of you guys know. But I do not know. Like, there's some debate over, like, you know, you see a homeless cat. Do you feed it? Do you not feed it? Like, is feeding it bad because you're building a dependency on human beings? I don't know. I don't know the answers to that. I would probably feed a homeless cat just because I'm a, uh, I have like a lot of compassion and I feel bad for animals and stuff, but I don't know if you're supposed to, you know, I don't know what the rules are there. 
And by rules, I mean like, you know, just generally accepted things that people agree on. I'm not saying that there probably there probably aren't any like actual legal. Well, maybe maybe in some areas there are actual legal rules. Like maybe there is a law like don't feed the animals or something. I don't know. I am an animal lover. I don't know too much about wild animals though. Like, like I will never let one of my cats become homeless. If my cat got out, I will hunt till the ends of the earth to find my cat. Just because I love my cat. My cat can't get away, even if it wanted to. I mean, I'll catch it. <laughs> I have a certain certain set of skills, guys. I will catch that cat. Anyway. I think this is looking pretty good. What do you guys think? What do you guys think so far? Hey, Tom, how's it going? Tom says to feed them. Maybe we get a poll going. Uh, let me see if I can do a poll. Hold on, what, real quick. Like, we're, we're doing all right on time, I think, tonight. Like, let's see. Can I do a poll? Um, I don't know how to do a poll. Let's see, plus sign. Oh, start a poll. Cool, neat. All right. Um, you... Um, find a homeless cat. Do you feed it? Boom. Sir Paul. All right. There you go. All right. So I'll just leave that up. I don't. Ah. Well, maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, so I'll just leave that up, and, um, uh, you know, it's kind of blocking the conversation. I don't know if I like that. There you go. All right, now it's not. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm just going to leave that up. This is my first time doing a poll, like, live, like, while actually talking to you guys. So, um, didn't Benji save Chuck Norris at some point? Probably. Yeah, Benji was famous when Chuck Norris was making all those movies, so I'm going to say probably on that. Benji was a super famous dog. Um, I know, like, there's some younger people in the chat sometimes. Um, you guys might not know Benji, but Benji was a favorite in my household. Um, I want, I had a dog, for those of you who are just coming into the chat, I was mentioning that I had a dog that looked like Benji. Uh, basically was Benji, except Benji had, like, these, um, like, little dark tufts on the, uh, end of his hair. Um. Or end of its ears, but uh, I love Benji, and Benji was, <laughs> Benji was in all the best movies. He was kind of kind of like a go-to Hollywood dog. I don't know whatever became of him. I don't know how long he lived, how many movies he was in. Somebody needs to do, like, there are lots of podcasts on different, uh, like, just aspects of movies and stuff. Uh, I shared with you guys over the um, the holidays. Um, my friend has a uh, podcast just on um, uh, Kurt Russell movies. And that's still going, by the way. So, like, I encourage you guys to, if you guys are the least bit uh, into Kurt Russell, go look for uh, Kurt Russell Rules on, like, Spotify. Basically, anywhere you get your podcasts, it's on there. And um, that's my buddy. Like, we're actually friends in real life. And um, anyway, he does, he, he basically goes into every aspect of... Um, Kurt Russell's movies and, and so on. So, like, I think there should be something like that for, like, movie animals, like pets and stuff. Um, oh, thanks, MJ. I appreciate that. Uh, thanks, uh, Nomadic Madman. Yes, this is a uh, Jack Russell Terrier or a Parsons Terrier. I, I forget where we landed. Um, they, uh, According to Kid, they are basically the same type of dog, except that one's a little bit taller. And I, I think that the reference picture I'm working off of is a Parsons but since I don't know the specific details, uh, I'm not willing to say one way or the other definitively. Let's just call it a Jack Russell Terrier. I think most people are more familiar with that. Since since you don't see the height of it, I don't think it matters. Anyway, um, I would like to see somebody do like an in-depth, like a podcast where they do in-depth um, analysis of all the different animal actors. You know, that would be awesome, right? Like, just to uh, have a podcast all about um, famous animals, like Lassie, 
like obviously Lassie wasn't one dog that they, they had to fill in a bunch of different dogs over time. Uh, same thing with like Mr. Ed, you know, like there, I'm sure there's some stories behind Mr. Ed, but these famous um, dog actors, somebody should do a podcast just about that. Cause I want to know. And if I want to know, that means other people know they want to know because like, I am not, <laughs> I'm not a, a person who has original thoughts. All my thoughts are recycled from others. So if I think this, somebody else is thinking it for sure. Yeah, so cute. You know, I think the other thing that's coming up soon, sorry, I'm just thinking of myself here, like this has nothing to do with you guys, but I think the uh, horse races are coming up soon. They have um, Keeneland uh, race, par race Park here. And I think that opens up in April. A lot happens in April. April's going to be a busy month, I think, for me. Hopefully for you guys as well. Um, for those of you who came in late, I also did show off my whiskey bottles earlier. Um, I might show them up again towards the end of this, uh, but maybe not because I don't know if I want to touch them with my hands all like kind of gross right now. Get a bit of white here. Just these like little white things just kind of like redirect the entire face. You know, it's just kind of like, you know, I want the dog's face to be a little bit whiter. So I'm just going to throw out some more puff here. But again, we're trying to keep it loose. Like the title says, we're not, we're not too worried about things being perfect or anything like that. I just love that scratching noise. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not. Like, I tried to set my uh, microphone so that, like, if the dog started barking, there's, like, a threshold where you guys wouldn't hear, like, loud barking so much. You might hear them, like, just a little bit, but you shouldn't hear, like, really loud barking. I don't know if that makes it where you can't hear this, like, cool scratching noises. I think that's cool. Shave off a little bit of that eye. Yeah, I think that's cool. Make this go in a little bit higher. Yeah, that actually looks really good. Hmm. I'm actually really happy with this picture. I didn't know what I was going to like, how it was going to turn out and stuff, but I'm pretty happy with this picture. How are we doing on time? Wow, we're not even at an hour yet. And this picture is almost done. What am I going to do, guys? Should I add to this? Oh, there is some more here. Um, You know, if you guys bear with me, maybe I'll throw up another uh, dog picture. We're going to reset and have, like, two goals where, like, one is... Um, to make loose dog drawings and then the second goal is going to be to like try to get two of them done it's really dark from here totally different cultural mindset about cats i like terriers jeremy when will your drawing be on the whiskey bottles uh will they be in the uh, stores. So the drawings are, let me clean my hands real quick. I'll go ahead and show those off. Um, so the, uh, the whiskey bottles are done. I haven't turned them in yet, but this is, uh, the owl one I did. So again, that's the, uh, maker's mark bottles. I'm trying to keep the charcoal off of them. So this is the owl one I did. And then this is the backside of the owl one with like an owl going, Caw -caw! you know, so that's one of them. And no, it won't be in stores. There's there's an online auction for these bottles for charity. So um, these will be up for auction. Uh, it's mid-April. And um, so I, I really like how this one turned out. You know, you got the signature coffee stuff going on in there. Got a little deer on the back. 
Um, so this is watercolor paper, and then I paper mache it to the bottle itself and then sealed it up with some Maj Paj and stuff. So, um, oh, I forgot to include Geppetto. I'm sitting over here like, oh, he's upset with me. Look, he's got his back turned to me. <laughs> he's upset that I forgot to include him in the uh, thing. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. The puppy needs a Magritte. Mag Hi, how do you pronounce that? Mag Magritte hat? Yes. Renee, he's talking about Renee Magritte. Uh, so basically a bowler cap. Uh, one of my favorite artists. I, again, one of these days, I'm just going to do some episodes on this channel, like some standalone videos and stuff. Just talking about some of my favorite artists. One of them is uh, Renee Magritte. I'm going to have to learn how to pronounce these names before I go off and do that. But um, he's got a picture where it's a it's an illustration of a pipe. And it has the caption, uh, ses, ses un, pi, un, un pipe or something. I don't know. I can't speak French. But anyway, basically translated means uh, this is not a pipe. And I love things like that because you're looking at a picture of a pipe. And then the caption says, it is not a pipe. And how are you supposed to parse that out? How are you supposed to take that? So what I what I find fascinating about that is that your your brain basically says, um, yes, actually, it is a pipe. You know, like, uh, why are you telling me it's not a pipe? But then the name of the actual art is called uh, Treachery of Images. Images. So, like, you know, it. it the picture's lying to you, essentially. It's just fascinating. Um, it's just fascinating, that picture. Now, it's also a little on the nose, and, you know, in, in some ways it's a little, like, lame by today's standards. But um, at the time, I think that was kind of interesting. So I, I do like Rene Magritte. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I like that guy. And uh, he also did, um, uh, what's, the, what's the name of that painting? The one with the uh, the guy that has the bowler hat and then the apple over his face. He did that painting as well. That, I think that's the one Tom's referring to. All right. So that, this is looking pretty cool. So, like, um, we're at the one hour mark. So instead of just giving up and calling it a day, let me see if I can get another dog in here. Um, let me see. Got a bunch of dogs on my thing. I think I turned out really good. Mm, maybe I'll put a cat in this picture for no reason. Well, I already did that guy just the other day, so I'm not going to do a German Shepherd. Let's put Rome Dog in here. Now, Rome Dog looks too similar. I, I don't think that that would be a good contrast. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a kitty cat. So I'm gonna put a kitty cat in here. All right. So again, keeping with like a loose style, I'm just gonna quickly draw a cat. I guess <laughs> it's not gonna be proportion. So like a cat's not gonna be uh, the common man. There you go. Uh, good one, Tom. Tom. Yes, kid. So, like, um, that's a bonus. So, like, if, if you're lucky, um, I'm just going to draw a cat here. It's not going to be proportioned uh, or proportioned to the dog. I just want to draw a cat here just to fill up time. You know, like, because I usually do, like, two hours. I got this dog done a lot quicker than I thought I would. So, we're going to do a, a cat while we're sitting here. Um, yeah, so, like, one of the other perks is one of those bottles uh, may end up in the Maker's Mark Museum. So the way that works is every artist does two bottles. One of them goes to a privated ticketed event. And I, I, know, I know what those cost now. Like the, um, the private ticketed event costs uh, $500. So like if you want to go and see these bottles in person and bid on them, it's going to cost you $500. Now you're guaranteed a bottle for your 500 bucks, but that's what it costs um, to, to go and mingle with the rich people. Um, there's also like a breakfast that you can go to, like, this is if you're in the area, obviously, and you didn't want to bid on one of the bottles, but you just wanted to see the bottles. You can go to like a breakfast for like 45 bucks. So, you know, there's, there's a, there's options for the poorer among us. It doesn't have to just be 500 bucks. Um, but anyway, so that is, um, 
as what that costs. So one of those bottles go to the uh, private ticketed event, and then one of them is put up for like an online auction. And then supposedly 10 bottles. So everybody, everybody does two, all of the artists do two. So they're going to have 200 bottles total. A hundred of those is going to the private ticketed event. And then a hundred is going to the online auction. And then 10 of those, I don't know who does the selection, what the criteria is. I don't know if makers marks themselves chooses. I would imagine. So I imagine they have some input into it. They choose, I guess, um, you know, which 10 actually go to their Maker Marks Museum, which is like where the distillery is and stuff. That would be ideal. That would be awesome. I need to draw a skunk. Good one, Bill. Um, I need to draw a skunk at some point. Anyway, um, I think that uh, I think that would be really cool because like if somebody bids on these and wins, they disappear into the ether. You'll never meet that person again. You'll never be able to go and see your art or anything like that. And I imagine it's the same way with any kind of art that you do. But if you can get into it like a museum, you know, a place where you can go and visit your art in the future where you can tell other people to go and see your art. I mean, what better what better way for your art to end up? You know, like that seems like the ideal outcome of any kind of like art showing is that something ends up in like a museum or something on permanent display. That'd be cool. Might have done this ear a little bit big compared to the uh, the face. So, all right. So I got basically a kitty cat in here. So this is like the, the, by the way, this is the kind of stuff that I like doing when I'm not on camera. I like just sketching. And um, I've been trying to keep a, a sketchbook, which kind of sucks so like i'm gonna get better at doing a sketchbook and then i'll start sharing my sketchbook but um yeah i just like drawing things just to practice it's not like for the video it's not like for um you know like the live stream or a demonstration or a standalone or anything like that it's just to draw you know here i'm just trying to kind of piece out a a cat basic cat shape head and then this is basically figure drawing of a cat. And I'm covering up like my main drawing while I'm doing this. So sorry about that. But uh, anyway, next to your bourbon bottle, a dog getting sprayed by a skunk. <laughs> I don't think they're going to accept that bill. I'm hoping they do another horse mania. And I, I wasn't, you know, doing this when the horse mania thing came out, but the horse mania is they had, life-size statues of horses they were all painted white and artists could decorate those and um i think they gave you like a thousand dollars or something in supplies to do it so like that would probably take like a lot of <laughs> mosh potch <laughs> so but um yeah i think that would be awesome doing like a life-size horse painting a life-size horse and then they all had like different themes and like um what was cool is like a lot of uh, the elementary schools around the town, they had they had the kids get involved. So you had like a lot of like little hand painting things and stuff on them. They were really cool. Like the ones the adults did, they, they were like super cool. But the ones that the, the kids did, those were there was like a special kind of cool, you know, like somebody somebody did a spider horse that was basically like Spider-Man. Um, outfit on a horse <laughs> it's just kind of cool all right so get a little bit of fur coming off here i'm going to switch to just so i can cover more area this is a fluffy cat so it's got a little bit of long fur so i think that the cat again this is like figure drawing for a cat you gotta get the gesture, right? It's just like if you're drawing a human being. So like if this was like, I don't know, like a dancing lady or something, you would get the curve of her dancing or whatever. Um, for a cat, you're trying to get the curve of the tail. And then once you got all of that, so basically the proportion would be, I'm thinking, so one, two, about three heads high. 
is what I'm seeing. So around here, and again, this is all eyeballing. So you, you know, you can measure all this stuff, but can you show you? Uh, yeah. So I, the only thing I have is photos and they're on my phone. So I can't show those to you because like my phone is actually in use, um, but I can show them to you later. But yes, his turned out really well. His were definitely um, like Maker's Mark inspired. So I think he was going for that, trying to get into the museum thing um, by pandering to them because he uh, he included like stuff that you would see on the uh, distillery tour uh, in his art. So he, he was going, he, he was like, you know, going for low hanging fruit of trying to impress them that way. You know, like anybody can do that. That's pandering. I'm a real artist. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'll definitely share that with you guys. <laughs> Hobo bourbon. So you got, I don't know what kind of cat this is. All I know is he's like a long haired cat. He's got like a big fluffy tail that kind of comes down. I, I don't think any cat actually has a tail this fluffy, but anyway, this guy's gonna. And, you know, his, his um stripes and stuff they basically go all over the place and then you kind of get into like this here and then... sorry i'm a little lost on um where i want to take this i think yeah, it's fur going over here. This is going to make for one weird thumbnail. Like, it's just going to be this random cat hanging off on the side here. All right. So I feel like that's enough to kind of fill my way around. All right. So this line really shouldn't be here because this is all going to be white. So basically, I put this in so that I knew where to kind of get... A little bit of shadow going on this cat. All right. And then now I can kind of come in and get some of the white fur that I actually see. Thank you, though, Larry. Yeah, I mean, ter terriers are so fun. I think that they're, like, used in, like, sheep herding or something like that. So they are... They are fast dogs, and um, they're short, right? So, like, when they're running around across the field, they kind of bounce, um, like hop, almost like a rabbit or like a deer or something. Um, and they're really cute to watch when they're they're out in, you know, a lot of people they like they live in cities and stuff like that. But you should really take these small dogs out to the country and let them run in a farm field. They're adorable. I think this <laughs> I need to pause a bit much. There you go. And if some of these things they get a little carried away. Like <laughs> this this cat has basically the equivalent of a two foot foot if it was a human. Like a 24 inch foot. All right, so I think that's kind of cool. Let's switch to this. Again, once you know where the basics of the cat is and stuff, you can quit with the, um, that like drawing stuff that I was doing. And then you can get like a lot more freer with things. So like, I know that this cat's got basically a white under chin. I kind of it's gonna have a little bit of white up here. A little bit of white up here. Humphrey Bogart bourbon bottle. Hey, I got a question for you guys. All right, so I have to name these bottles. Like when I turn them in, like apparently they put the name of the bottle with um you know, like the description of it and stuff like that when it goes up for auction. But I think it's just the title. I, I don't think that they actually describe the bottle. So here's my dilemma. Um, I want 
I don't I don't have any confidence that they're going to put in a description. So I don't think they're going to tell people that this is like painted with coffee, right? The I think the only shot I've got is coming up with that in the title. So like I want to express to the potential buyer that this is painted in coffee um through the title, right? So the only thing I can come up with is like coffee deer or coffee owl or something lame like that. If you guys want to come up with something more interesting than that, I'm all ears. I would love to hear um, what you guys have to say about, you know, what to call these uh, bottles. Um, let me see if I can put these back in the picture without. Let's see. Eh, put this guy here. Put this guy here. So if you had to name these bottles, there you go. Kind of like that. I don't want to, I don't want to get charcoal on them. Um, so if you could name these bottles, what would you name these guys? Um, so that in the description, it actually conveys the idea that it is, um, it, it is, uh, drawn in coffee or painted in coffee. Cause like, I'm not really sure how to pull that off. I want, I want the customer to know that it's coffee. But I think the only uh, bit that I've got to explain that is through the title. And I just want a cool title too. So I don't, I don't mind passing off your guys' ideas as my own. <laughs> so I'll leave those up for like two minutes and now I'll move them out of the way. You Jack Russell Terrier is so bad about digging holes. Oh no. Let's see how this poll's doing. Um, Find a homeless cat, do you feed it? Let's see, you got seven votes. Let's see, close poll. Let's see, what was the outcome of that? I don't know how to see the outcome. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, 86% of you guys, sorry, in this uh, chat, it doesn't tell me. 86% uh, of you guys say yes, you would feed a homeless cat, and 14% say no. So the people who say no, I'm kind of curious why. Um, Maybe they just don't like cats. I don't know. But uh, my understanding is that in some cases, you're not supposed to. So I can see that being the case. But yeah, my inclination is that I would feed the uh, cat. I would totally feed the cat just because I feel bad for it, you know. But I don't think you're supposed to. I think I think they would say something about like, well, that's just bad for the cat overall or something. I don't know. Some, something that I probably wouldn't agree with, but it is what they would say. No fur markings coming off. Yeah, I think this cat's gonna look kind of cool. It's it's kind of small, so it's it's a little tough to get detail in here when it's so small and you're working with like a big ass um, blending stump and like stick charcoal and stuff. But it it's all about you know getting some suggestions of different cat features in here. Like you don't have to draw everything perfectly. Again, this is like supposed to be like a loose style. You're just suggesting various things. Like I'm suggesting some fur coming out of this here, here. And I'm, I'm mostly suggesting the shape of the face, right? So like the shape of the face, you guys know what cats look like. They have the, the very square face. Not square. Uh, triangle face. Sorry. <laughs> Why did I say square? So, if I can suggest all of that, it's a good enough kitty. Considering this isn't even something I was supposed to draw, I just wanted to uh, give you guys a little bit of a bonus because, like, apparently I'm getting faster at drawing charcoal. Like, this isn't a perfect dog, but it is... Uh, it is nice. Like I could do more to it, but then it wouldn't be the loose style that I was going for. Um, there are some loose style portraits that I do of humans that only take like, I don't know, I, I've done a couple that are only like 20 minutes. I've been practicing drawing faster. So, you know, it's, it's kind of cool to see that my work has been paying off.
Lorraine says you should never feed wildlife, but I am sure I would end up eating it. Yeah, exactly. That's what that's kind of what I'm saying. Um, you know, there's some arguments that like, you know, the more cats that end up in an area, it has like side effects that most people don't even think about. Like, you know, cats kill birds, right? So like you introduce a bunch of cats, like a bunch of homeless cats to an area, you can basically kiss your bird population by because those cats are going to get them. And they're good at it. They're like efficient bird killers. So, you know, um, you want you want to be you want to be supportive of homeless cats, but then also it's like I don't know. Like I kind of like birds too. You know, <laughs> like you need birds in the uh, environment. I do like birds. I've got a bird feeder out in my front yard now, and it's it's great to watch these birds come in, and it's like it's like the best bird food in town apparently because they all show up every morning to get my food like you can see them skipping neighbors uh bird feeders just to come to mine like i feel like i i've got that hot trendy spot for bird and bird food i should start charging birds like admission fees or something a bit of a kitty cat peeking out here This is kind of the same thing I was dealing with when I was doing the back of those bourbon bottles. It's like, how do you take what you did on the front and make it smaller? Because, like, this is, like, a super small kitty here. I should draw the Benji dog. I love Benji. So you should really wait until the end before you add these highlights, by the way. So like I added them a little bit early because if you wait until the end, you can do it over the shadowed areas. You should really render the shadow areas first instead of trying to work between the shadowed or like the light areas to put in. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. You'll just end up with a bunch of smudged highlights that you'll have to like put back in if you wanted to add more detail or definition. It's just like this bonus cat just sitting here for no reason. <laughs> Not even the right size. Like if it was the right size to the dog and stuff, this would actually look really cool. But it's just, just a random little sketch. Yeah, sometimes I uh, plan these things out and I, I want to do a picture that goes you know, relatively in a predictable amount of time. Like sometimes I screw up and I, I bit off, bite off a little more than I can chew. I start a picture that, you know, I'm thinking oh, it's only going to take like two hours. It ends up taking like five hours just because of the amount of detail and stuff in it. And then other times like this, I, I really thought this dog was going to take a lot longer. But that's okay. We always, we always have something to draw around here, guys. It's all about practicing anyway. So... You know, when you, when you finish one picture, you ain't done. So you gotta continue practicing. Um, kid says, that's pretty cute that the cat is looking at the dog. Yeah, so maybe the cat, like, if I, if I close out this, maybe the cat's, like, off in the distance or something. Like, I could have arranged this a little bit more where it's, like, the cat's on the shelf behind the dog or something. But it's not meant, it, they're not meant to, like, like, really, I should throw in some other pictures of animals in here and stuff, just so that it's apparent that they're not joined together. Like, if I can get this picture here done enough in the next five minutes, I actually will take on a third picture. I done enough I wanted to basically resemble a cat this a cute cat all right so that cat isn't done done but again we're keeping with like loose style just suggesting things. I think from that aspect, 
that kitty is good enough. I'm going to move on to a third thing for no reason. And I am going to put in and try a horse face. I do love me some horses. All right, so the horse one, I guess I can put in over here or maybe up here. Let me just do up here since I've got this extra space up there. All right, third, third picture for the night. I'm going to loosely draw a horse. This is good practice though. I, I think it's good practice to, um, you know, figure out shapes of things, how to draw things quickly. Like say I was out in a field and I encountered a horse and I wanted to capture the horse quickly. So the way, the way you do that, right? Uh, whether it's a horse, whether it's a person, like say you're at the bar and you just want to capture the, uh, the person up there at the counter ordering a drink, or if you're at like a coffee shop, same deal. Um, you're basically looking for the big shapes, right? So you want to capture the big shapes. And in this case, the shape, the big shapes on the, the horse, is just like, you know, the, this like long face. Okay. You want to capture that pretty quickly. Because you don't know when your subject's going to move. Like, this horse can just up and move on me at any moment. Okay? So I want to capture that shape. And then, you know, again, I'm using I'm using things I've already drawn to kind of give me an idea of proportion. So I know that this is, this is the jowl or whatever this part is. And then that means that, you know, the neck kind of comes down like this. And again, I'm just capturing the, the basic shape quickly. I know that somewhere in here, maybe about right here, I'm going to have like an eye. And I don't even have to draw the, the full on eye. I can just draw in some shadows. I know that over here, this cheek is going to be shadowed in. Um, all of this kind of comes down through here. And again, so this is what I w would have like done in that figure art kind of um, uh, session that I was supposed to go to. By the way, they're having another one of those. So I'm definitely going to try to make that one. Um, but anyway, uh, you try to capture the shape of the figure quickly. Now, in this case, I'm not doing a human. I'm doing a horse. But it's the same principle. You know, you're capturing the big shape and then you're moving into some of these smaller shapes. So like the big shape is, of course, this... Uh, this horse's head. Um, let me scoot this. Well, I can't scoot this down. Maybe I can. No, I can't really scoot it. All right, so you're not going to be able to see the ears because of where I put this. Sorry. But anyway, just pretend like there's some ears up here. And again, you're capturing the the big shapes, and then moving into the smaller shapes. So the big shapes of the ears, the same principle. And you're moving into the smaller shapes. Got the main going here. And then part of the shapes is the shadows of, of the uh of the thing that you're drawing. Um I miss Oh sorry, I, I've been missing um the Senka of Nim chock full of bucks. <laughs> Jeremy, it doesn't matter who you are. Only matters who they think you are out painting. <laughs> I like that. Uh, sorry, I haven't really been paying attention to the chat. I forgot that I asked you guys to come up with names for me. I'm going to have to go back and check those out. Doesn't matter who, who they think you are. I like it. So again, small shapes, you're moving into like the no a nose after your big shapes are accomplished. You want the nose to kind of like match up. So you're using pieces to work from. It's all dark through here. This is like the mouth area. Got this kind of mouth coming through here. You've got basically a line that kind of comes down off the eye. And this isn't set in stone. This is how you draw dragons, by the way, too. Like you basically have this line coming off the eye. 
and kind of get in a little bit more detail on that eye. Let's bring this line back over, refining your shape. Over here, you've got oops, are crack. That's a definition. So there is some muscles that kind of come through, like in the area here. I don't know if they're muscles or just like bone structure, but through here, there's some shadow. This shadow often outlines that that blaze area. So like if you have like a, a stripe or like, um, or even a snip uh, or a star, um, I think a snip would be down here, uh, a star blaze or something like that. That'll be up in this area. But I think that, I think that's all wrapped into like a muscle structure as well. So you know, just kind of, just kind of sketch that kind of stuff in. Again, you start with that big shape and you're starting to refine the shapes and stuff. And now it's starting to look like a horse. I mean, it's not the best horse in the world. But also we drew it in what, 10, 20 minutes or probably even less. I wish I could scooch this down so that I can do the ears and stuff, but this is fine. So you got a little bit more shadow back here and you're constantly like looking back at things. So I'm looking at the distance between the eye here and the edge of the cheek here. And just double checking to make sure I got my measurements right. Again, you're freehanding this, so like, uh, I mean, you're already, <laughs> you're already screwed on getting things perfect. But the more you practice, the better you are at eyeballing this stuff. Like I've gotten better at eyeballing this stuff than I was in the past. But still, I I still screw up. So like, especially with like when doing people, <laughs> I might have like some weird lazy eye or something like that just because I, I didn't get my proportions correct. But as far as horses go, I've drawn enough horses that it seems like I've gotten better at doing the proportions on horses. Leave room for the Tasmanian devil. That's just basically a, like a little twirl. I can draw a Tasmanian devil right now. Like here, I'll draw a Tasmanian devil. There you go. <laughs> Done. I know what I am to you guys. I'm just a monkey with a pencil. You tell me what to draw, I draw it. All right, and then you can kind of get like creative and stuff like with um, these little lines that kind of come down and stuff. Just, I like to get, especially like with hair when it's just like going all over the place, like a main wood and stuff. I just kind of like let the pencil just do it, do whatever it wants to do. Of course through here, there should be some shadows. So I'll go ahead and put that in. So this all was really actually pretty dark except for this part over here you want to kind of keep that light either that is another i'm looking at this reference picture i can't tell either that is like another muscle structure that is a little bit lighter or it's catching it's like reflected light something like that whatever the deal is and when in doubt just put things in shadows right so like if you come in and hash in some shadows and stuff like that you know that hides a bunch of mistakes More shadow going through here. When something this small is this small, you're just kind of basically scribbling in things. Scribbling in things and then, you know, you end up with some pretty decent features. And to me, that kind of looks like a horse, especially considering we just kind of built it in, but I don't know, five minutes. Might go for another uh, animal. We still got Get 30 minutes left. All right. Let me finish up the ears here. It's just a sketch of pet uh, night. You guys should uh, send me um, send me pictures to work off of, and I'll just, like, sketch a dog. They're not going to be, like, perfect drawings or anything like that, but you can get, like, some sketches and stuff pretty quick. All right. So, again, you know, shadows... The page per itself is the midtones, and then you can come in and add some highlights. So I'm going to add like a little bit of a blaze here. Maybe a little bit of highlights along the nose. Kind of coming down here. And then I don't really want to overdo it for this like little tiny horse up here. It's just, you know, filler. So anyway, horse. Um, I could blend in parts as well. 
to make some parts smoother in the sketch. A few will smooth out some of that stuff. How do you take your coffee with bourbon? Yep. So it's like basically bourbon with um, coffee on bourbon. I like that. That is pretty good. Athena Owl Espresso. I like that too. So I kind of want I, I kind of want the two names to match a little bit. So, you know, that's another challenge with it. So like the deer should pretty much match the um, the owl in terms of like what I'm naming it. Um, let's see. So we got a cat. We've got a horse. We've got a dog. There's something else I can throw in here in the next 30 minutes. On an elephant. No, I already did the elephant recently. Throw a fox. Ah, a fox is basically a cat. Never mind. I don't want to do that. Um. Throwing a rabbit. Yeah, I ain't got no rabbit. I ain't done a rabbit in a while. There we go. We're going to do a rabbit. Okay, for a rabbit, I'm going to draw the rabbit super big. No. <laughs> All right, so for a rabbit, I'm, I'm going to put a rabbit right here. All right, so for a rabbit, this is fun. I like this, I like just pivoting. All right, so again, dealing with the big shape, right? So this is how I draw something. Like if I'm out in nature and I'm just drawing something that I see, you know, maybe I'm at the zoo or something. You know, what are what are the basic shapes that I see? What is, so in this case, I see kind of like not really square because you've got these curves and stuff going on maybe that's a bit much but so these guys they have super small heads but they have these super fat cheeks right so it almost looks like a stormtrooper helmet <laughs> all right so the big shapes are you got this big ear around that up here not as pointy as i would have thought okay got the big ears gotta make sure it's about the same size as the other this one's gonna kind of go off the page just because of where i put this see right about here is where this inner starts and then it kind of comes up around all right so that's the basic shapes there all right so now you got to think about um now that, now that you've got yourself basically a frame so again that's one of the reasons why you do your big shapes and you can just throw in like a lot of mass here if you wanted to and stuff, um, which I do sometimes to get that kind of frame going. But in this case, I, I'm, I've got more of like of an outline. Either way is fine, but however you want to work it. Um, but now you start thinking about like the smaller shapes. So like inside the inside of this frame, you've got basically this wall of fur here that represents up to the nose. You've got this triangle here, which is the actual nose. You've got this line here. You've got basically coming off of this wall here. You've got an eye socket. You've got this gigantic, beautiful eye. Kind of comes around here. Make sure I don't draw it too big. And then this right here kind of kind of caves in. I don't I don't know. I don't picture rabbits having too large of brains. There's not enough space for it. Um, Hater says, uh, hey, I apologize for not being able to join in chat as I'm currently cooking. I'm watching your stream on various devices using virtual private servers. Oh, cool. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, you know, any any help you guys could throw my way with watch hours? I'm really trying to build up the watch hours recently. Um, 
So like I've got I've got a decent amount of people viewing and I I, I really appreciate all of that. Um the um the problem is they they only count the watch hours for like the past 365 days, right? So like I've been doing this channel for like going on two years now. So the problem is that every day the the views I had for like last year kind of drop off like because they're outside of that 365 day window. So yeah, um, you know, watch hours would be cool. Um, sometimes people just put this on in the background and stuff while they're doing other things. Uh, you know, I don't like, I don't expect for you guys to like watch this stuff and like pay close attention to what I'm doing. Uh, but you know, like anytime you, you just feel bored or something, you just want to throw on something and, and just put it on mute or something while you're listening to music. That's so cool. That'd be awesome. It, it does help the channel. Like I'm not, I'm not expecting miracles here and stuff. It, it's, it's kind of an organic thing anyway. Um, you get the watch hours as you kind of go along and stuff. I'm not in any hurry to be in their partner program or anything like that anyway. So. It's just, you know, if you're bored or something and you just want to throw this channel on, that'd be cool. So I, I do appreciate that, Hater. Thanks. Alpresso. <laughs> and the deer. Not my real dad. <laughs> you guys have some cool names. I don't know if I'm going to accept any of these and stuff, but I, I really like them. Like, if I went in there and they're like, what's the name of that bottle? Not my real dad. <laughs> that might be tough. All right, so you get the uh, basic shape of the rabbit here. Get this little, like, tuft going down here. Don't worry, doggy. We're almost done. We got, we got basically 20 minutes to finish this rabbit up. We got... I do like rabbits. Who doesn't like rabbits? This dog back here likes rabbits. <laughs> this dog's like, why don't you ever draw me, Daddy? Jerk. Now, this is seriously loose, like the rabbit down here. This is basically how you draw a loose picture. So, I mean, you could rapidly sketch things. Like, I don't even know how long I've been working on this, but like, say, say I'm riding a bus and a rabbit gets on, right? Which would be pretty absurd. But say a rabbit gets on that bus and I only have like, like, oh my God, there's a rabbit on this bus and I don't have my cell phone on me, so I can't take a picture of it. And I have to describe this rabbit to somebody later. You can quickly get the impression of a rabbit, you know? Hey, who's could do? Welcome to the chat. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Um, I know I've been trying to say a lot more recently, um, but I really super appreciate you guys. And, you know, I thank you guys for your all of your support because you guys, you guys are way, way above and beyond on the uh, supportive route. You know, like I, I truly appreciate it. I don't. I don't feel like I deserve the kind of support that you guys show me because you guys are just awesome. But I do appreciate it. And I, I want to remind myself to say that every time because I'm always appreciative. I don't always remember to express my appreciation. Um, I want to be the type of guy who expresses his appreciation. That's my stock way of phrasing things that I want to pick up. So like uh, whenever I want to develop a new habit, I mentioned this before. I, I frame it that way. I say, I want to be the type of person who, you know, whatever it is. So I want to be the type of person who expresses appreciation. And then, you know, saying it enough times, you start to think of yourself as that type of person. And um, it becomes true. You know, anybody can be anything. You have to clearly define what it is that you actually want to be. So I think that that's a helpful little trick for that to uh, bring yourself back and remind yourself of what type of person you want to be. Because you can be anything you want in this world. There's nothing stopping you from doing anything. But there's some things you want to be and there's some things you don't want to be, you know. 
So you have to choose, and I choose to be the type of person who shows appreciation for things. So it's just, you know, again, making marks and refining them. You see that, like, I had the basic bunny, like, five, ten minutes ago. Now it's adding, um, adding more to it, sketching it out. You guys got one, two, three, four creatures for the price of one tonight, guys. Gonna have to start upping the entrance fee on this channel. <laughs> Who's gonna ask, Jeremy, are you a bourbon lover? Absolutely, I'm a bourbon lover. I am a bourbon lover. Thank you for noticing. Thank you for asking. Um, I live in central Kentucky, so that's where bourbon comes from. So it's just kind of part of the culture around here. Uh, we're basically bourbon and horses around here. That's basically all we've got. Bluegrass music. Oh yeah, bluegrass music. I like bluegrass music. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say that that is an afterthought. I should throw that in. Is um, you know, something, something good that we export. Uh, we are the chief export of bluegrass music. You probably have other bluegrass music in other states, like maybe down in Nashville or something like that. But around here, we love our bluegrass music. Nearly every street festival that has music, you'll hear a banjo at some point. Um, I personally like um, like bluegrass music. It, it's on. It it just I don't know if it's a nostalgia of it or something, which is kind of weird because I didn't listen to a lot of bluegrass growing up, so I don't know why it would be nostalgic for me. But music like um, uh, "Oh Brother Where Art Thou," like a lot of people have seen that movie, so you might understand what I mean when I say that kind of music. That kind of music just really gets into your soul, you know. Like, it doesn't matter if you like that kind of music or not. You hear that kind of music, you just have to appreciate it. I don't know what these dogs are doing behind me. I feel like they're planning an escape. Gotta get these ears in here. How much time we got? We got 13 minutes to finish up this uh, bunny rabbit. I think we can do it. Because, again, we're keeping it light and expressive. We're just hinting at features. We're not fully defining them. Like, basically, I've got enough information. I, um, yeah, I've talked about this before, so I, I can reiterate it. This. So basically, when, your job as, a, as an artist is to convey information, you know, as a visual artist. Your job as a visual artist is to communicate, right? So you're communicating different things. Like, I want to communicate that there's an ear here. Now, I have a lot of options on how far I want to go with that. So like I can communicate that there's an ear here by drawing a completely realistic ear, a lot of detail, photorealistic, so that you know that that is absolutely an ear, right? But that's not what I have to do. I don't have to do that. I've got other options. So um, ultimately my goal is to let you know that this is an ear over here in the corner. Now I could do that minimalistically i don't have to put in a lot of detail just to tell you that this is an ear um you can tell that this was an ear like five minutes ago just with a little amount of detail um so as an artist i have that kind of options of uh like how much detail to put in that's where you develop your own personal style and and um how you communicate but it really is like a about communication so i'm communicating you know that there's an eye socket here with an eyeball and and so on see almost there how much time we got yeah some whiskers in here um again Part of the technique is you, you smooth out a bunch of stuff and then you can kind of come back and add some more detail after the fact. So right now I'm just like super fast trying to get all the things in here. Let me do this. All the things in here I want to convey.
And back to the point that I keep making is it doesn't have to have a lot of detail. It just has to be suggestive of, you know, furry mass down here. And it's up to you how much detail you want to put in to communicate that. Now in my case, I'm just wanting shadows in here just to let you know that this is here. All right. A little bit of detail here. Got like a line forming the mouth. And just kind of comes up into... You don't really see any nostrils on the uh, bunny, but you know that they're there. And a little bit of some lines in that blurry area that I missed. All right, so that looks pretty good. Let's add some white highlights. Obviously, it's catching the light on the eyeballs. These are super big eyeballs because it's such a small face. So make sure you grab that little light there. All right, so through here, let me switch to pencil. How are we doing? I mean, banjo music, like, yikes. <laughs> it doesn't like the banjo music, huh? Um, Jack likes rabbits. I started with highlights this time. I'm not getting the cat food wine. Oh, jeez, the cat food wine. All right. So, got some white here in the cheeks. You've got some whiskers that kind of come off. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these whiskers just because, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see them anyway. But, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, there's some white over here. Some white here and then tucked over the nose. A little bit of white up here, not too much. This part here, I'm going to have to switch to my soft. Because I'm going over the charcoal, I need to switch to my softer uh, pastel, which covers up charcoal pretty nicely. I mean, you still get kind of like some smudging and stuff like that. That's just natural, but it's okay. A little bit more white up here. Get a line of white up here. A little white highlighting that eye socket. Again, this the sketchy style, right? This is not photorealistic rendered or anything like that. But it's still kind of cool, you know? I mean, look at look at all the information you were able to convey in such a short period of time doing it this way. Now, it's not a photorealistic picture, but it's not going to win any, like, drawing awards. This Mine isn't, at least. Maybe yours will. Um, but it's still, like, you basically got the essence of that rabbit. And uh, I was kind of keeping track. It's been less than 10 minutes, I think, on this rabbit. I don't know. I'll have to go back and look. But... I don't know if anybody else was keeping track, but by my account, this was like less than 10 minutes and we have a rabbit in here. So like, imagine if you're riding a bus or a train or something like that and a rabbit gets on and you want to, and you want to draw that momentous event because rabbits do not ride the train all that often. Um, you can, you can get that information down pretty quick. That that's basically the lesson there. And I don't know how long we spent on the horse. That's not the best horse in the world. I like the rabbit better than I like the horse. It's hard to draw a horse this small and, and get, like, a lot of detail quickly. Um, I feel like <laughs> that kid's still stuck on the banjo music. I think Deliverance was filmed in Georgia. It's either Georgia or West Virginia. I don't remember which. But, yeah, whenever I think of Deliverance, it's, like, whenever I'm out in West Virginia. But it's not that. It's the whole just like listen to listen to the Oh Brother Where Art Thou soundtrack. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the Liberance banjo music. I'm talking about I'm talking about George Clooney singing into a can, uh, Man of Constant Sorrow. Um, it's just as much violin or fiddle or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, some guitar. 
it, it's more than just a banjo. Anyway, my favorite. So actually, um, great, great question. All right, so we've got we've got ten minutes left. I'm gonna. I love this poll stuff. I'm gonna try another poll. Okay. Um, I don't know how to do a poll with multiple choice. Let's see. My favorite favorite is um, horse rabbit dog cat. Boom. All right. So I'm gonna throw up this poll. And you guys tell me which is your favorite uh, here. And um, let's see, how do I minimize this? All right, so hopefully that'll go away so that I can actually read. Um, oh, okay, Larry's taking off. All right, well, have a good time, Larry. Um, we're wrapping up here soon anyway. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of like finish off some of these uh, features and then I think we're done. Um, I give it maybe two minutes on the poll and uh, we can wrap this up. I just think it's kind of cool. I, I like doing these polls. They're so much fun. I think that, uh, let me go back to my doggo here. I don't know if I still have him up. Yeah, I got him up. I think this guy could be a little bit darker through here. I don't know how I'm going to take a thumbnail for this. I'm obviously not going to be able to fit all the creatures in. This is like one, two, three, four different, you know, it's a horse that I don't think is completely finished. Let me work on this horse a little bit. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. Unless, of course, the horse was drawn by me. Then it's not a horse. A lot of people like that dragon I drew the other day too. I should draw more of those. Um, I was thinking like, I need to do like a full fantasy scene. So like you got the dragon, maybe you got a knight, maybe you've got um, like a wizard there, all that stuff. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that's good enough, I think, for a horse. All right. Okay. I think we're about done. Let's check out the poll. Appreciate you guys uh, being patient with me, doing all these pictures. Let's see what we got. So on the poll, clearly you guys really like the dog. A couple of people like the horse. Nice. Um, not a lot of love on the, uh, the rabbit or the cat. That's fine. You know, cats and rabbits. It's okay. Um, but clearly you guys really love the dog. So the dog's a winner. Everybody loves the dogs. Um, and it looks like at least one person liked the horse. So that's cool. All right. Well, I think that's, uh, that's it for this. Uh, hopefully you guys had fun. Um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe in the future we'll do some more of the, uh, the, um, yeah, everybody's, uh, taking off. So, all right, you guys have a great evening. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and wrap this up. Let me go back to me. There you go. Um, maybe in the future we'll do more of these, like, uh, you know, multiple, I didn't intend to do multiple animals, but this was a lot of fun just drawing on the spur of the moment. Um, and, uh, I had a lot of fun. So maybe we'll do that some more in the future. Uh, Hater says, Jeremy, you embody a brotherly figure prompting me to utilize various devices to watch your stream in order to provide you with genuine watch time and views, leveraging the resources at my disposal. Well, thank you very much, uh, Hater. I, I do appreciate that. Um, if this is your first time watching, I encourage you guys to, uh, you know, give me a thumbs up and subscribe so that you get a notification next time I'm live. I'm, I'm usually live on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm usually live on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and obviously the dog wants me to hop off, so I'm going to hop off now. I'll, I'll see you guys. Bye. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye.